Hello and welcome to the Non-Farm Payrolls webinar with myself, David Madden, hosted by CMC Marcus. Today's date is Friday the 8th of December and the time has just gone 1.15pm UK time. As always with the webinars, uh, the first thing I'll do is leave the risk warning on screen uh, for you to have a read through. And what we'll be doing is leave the risk warning on screen. You guys have a read through it. It's all very straightforward. If you've been to our webinars before, it's it's a it's very it's common practice. Uh, it essentially states anything that is stated and or discussed in this webinar is just purely my own personal opinion, not my own views. It's not to be construed as explicit investment or trading advice. But we will be obviously having a kind of a, a chat about what's going on in the markets. It's an interactive webinar, so. We will have that feedback from yourselves. Uh, if you just want to continue on reading through the slides, in the usual rundown, I'll talk about what's going on in the US economy, talk about the expectations for the webinar, talk about what's going on in the um, in the markets in general. When the numbers come out at, quarter, at half past the hour, uh, we, we will t discuss all the numbers, see how they're impacting the markets. I'll take a look at some of the markets which, which you could see potential moves on on the back of the uh, of the results. So this, this is the last slide I'll just leave up there in front of you. Just have a quick read of that and we can progress on to the webinar itself. So now that we've gotten actual, the actual um, the risk warning out of the way, we can actually focus on the actual, the actual interesting bit, which is actually the non farm payrolls figure itself. Um, the, the figures are out in about, in about 12 or 13 minutes time. And let's go on the trading platform to the Market Pulse tab. And the fourth option down is the market calendar. This gives us a breakdown. This is our CMC Markets uh, economic calendar. It gives a breakdown of what we can expect uh, in terms of the economic events for the uh, economic events for the day, for the days uh, that lie ahead of us. Uh, so looking around here at our calendar, uh, at the economic calendar, scrolling down to half one, looking at the uh, at the on, at the non-farm payrolls figure. We can see here that we're expecting 200,000 jobs to be created in the month of November. This is the forecast here. The, the, the previous months of the reading, uh, the October figure, came in at 261,000. So bearing in mind, uh, it, if you consider it be a decent sized drop off uh, in, uh, if we get 200,000 or north of 200,000. But still, US economists uh, have stated that, that the United States economy needs to be adding about 200,000 jobs every consistent on average consistently every single month for the for the US economy to keep it uh, growing at the rate it has been growing at also in the report um, we, we do have we do have the unemployment data coming out as well the unemployment rate is tipped to come in at 4.1% 4, 4 remain unchanged from uh, the previous October rating of 4.1% uh, as always with the non-farm payrolls, the devil is actually in the detail. Um, I started in City about 10 years ago, and the amount of times I've seen the the headline figure, this is the main figure here, either coming above or below expectations as the market moves one way, and then the other details come in, be it revision, revisions to previous months non-farm payrolls, or perhaps a change in the unemployment rate, or even what you come on to in a moment's time, the earnings figures can actually skew uh, or can, can drastically alter how the overall job report is viewed. Uh, obviously, it's called non-farm payroll, so that's the number that everyone looks out for. But uh, we may even see it uh, again today, because we often do, uh, whereby the headline figure comes in one way, and the other figures, by the other figures, I mean the revisions, the unemployment, and the earnings figures come in a different way. And speaking of earnings, on a month-by-month -month basis, Average earnings in the, United, in the United States is expected to tick up by 0.3%. That compares with zero growth uh, in, from, the, from, the, uh, from, the, uh, from the November reading. And on a year-on-year, -on, -year, on, on an annual basis, uh, even though we, uh, we don't have the, the forecast uh, inserted here, uh, another uh, news, news terminal uh, predicts the forecast. Their, their consensus is to be an increase of 2.5%. And that compares with the previous rating of 2.4%. So we are expecting a tick up in both the monthly and the yearly, the year-on-year -year average earnings figures. And why is earnings important? Um, the, the headline unemployment rate of 4.1% at multi-year lows, multi-decade multi-decade lows 
in the United States is something American politicians are very proud of. Uh, they, 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 they talk about the headline figure, but if you kind of delve further into that, we have the rate at which up jo the job the rate at which jobs creation is rising in the United States is vastly outpacing earnings growth. And uh, we have this divergent whereby people are actually in jobs, which is actually is obviously good. Uh, people uh, people who are employed tend to spend more money, hence driving on the economy. But one of the issues is that wage growth in the United States has been plateauing a bit. Uh, we have seen a small bit of a tick up in the last few months, but by and large, of the last few years, it's been a bit on the slugger side. And when people don't see a decent pick up in, in, in income, therefore they don't, they're, in, they're disposable income, but they've left to spend kind of, you know, luxury items or, or non essential items, if you want to call it that, increases. And what you want to see is a scenario whereby Americans are actually not only in jobs, but you also want to see real growth. So you do want to see growth pick up, and on top of that, uh, that, that will give a better chance of actually having a proper and sustained recovery because some of these jobs tend to be low income jobs, it can be casual jobs, it can be jobs which are part time, it can be very different contract jobs. Obviously, they're not they're agricultural, that's why it's called non farm payrolls in the report. But bearing in mind, you do want to see. Uh, a, a, a decent rise in average earnings to be more confident that the Federal Reserve are going to continue down their path of monetary tightening. And speaking of the, monetary, of the Federal Reserve, we do have the we do have the Federal Reserve update next week. Uh, it's widely expected to have an increase in in, in the interest rates uh, by 0.25 percent to 1.5 percent. Um, obviously, we're, we're going to have the press conference that will that will run alongside that as well. That's going to be that's going to be the, the highlight of, of next week's session, seeing as uh, the the markets have been heavily pricing in for a long time now uh, the rate the rate hike of 0.25 percent next week. So the commentary and if that goes along with the press conference next year is going to be is going to be what's, what's going to be in, in play. Um, speaking of the Federal Reserve, um, we, we, even though as always the, the actual press conference is going to be quite important, it's also worth noting that. In 2018, at the end of uh, 2017, in comparison with the middle of 2018, the Federal Reserve makeup is going to be quite different. It's going to be quite different. Uh, we have a number of new members coming in. We have more members to join the Federal Reserve as well. So the makeup uh, of, of the Federal Reserve is going to be a, a bit is, is is something of an unknown for the time being. And if it's something of an unknown, the markets may err on the side of caution and actually think you could, may only see. On say on the, on the three interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve in 2018, whereas more kind of bullish, bullish uh, uh, analysts and, and economists might be, might be predicting four rate hikes from the Federal Reserve in 2018. But once again, it's an unknown quantity, seeing as we've had uh, we've we've had a couple of new, new appointments and we have more to come. But if you look at the economic data we've had out of the last out of the United States in the past few weeks, it has been Broadly speaking, quite positive. Uh, just just um, yesterday, we had the initial jobless claims figures, uh, which actually fell slightly from 238,000 240, down to 236,000. Um, not ever so slightly better than expected. On Wednesday, we had the ADP private employment report, which came out, and if you if you look at the if you look at the um, not that that figure. It came in at 190,000 jobs were created, broadly in line with expectations, but it was a reasonable decline on the previous month's rating of 235,000 jobs that were created. So it's nothing that would really kind of um, uh, set the market on fire, but it's fairly so solid numbers. If you could get somewhere in around the kind of 200,000 mark, that would be respectable. And to mention that at the top of the webinar, economists broadly believe that. The United States continuously adds about 200,000 jobs to the payrolls every single month that should keep the, the economy moving along nicely. But I also, I also, I also feel you need to have a decent pickup in wage growth as well to actually accompany that. It's no point in having people in jobs for the sake of jobs when actually the, 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 the recovery is only going to go, go so far if wage growth isn't actually fairly decent as well. But looking beyond uh, the actual employment and jobs related data out of the United States. We've recently seen um, that the PCE figure, the core PCE figure, uh, private um, private consumption and expenditure, which is the 
which is the kind of barometer of the Fed, uh, it came in at, on an annual basis at 1.4%, remained unchanged. So it's 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 not up up, up as far as far as they'd, far as they'd like it, but at least it's actually moving in the right direction. Next week, I mean, that will be headline CPI numbers coming up in the US, and uh, they're on an annual basis. It's expected to remain unchanged at two percent. Going back to the PCE comment, uh, we did see a decent pickup in the most recent reading of it, and the actual private income. Private income picked up by zero point two percent. So that was actually something that, that's actually worth noting, seeing as we're, we're keeping an eye out for the average earning figures that are coming out in about five minutes' time. Looking at, looking at other aspects of the United States, uh, the United States uh, um, economy in terms of economic indicators, new home sales, pending home sales, and the conference board consumer confidence figures, which all come out in the last few weeks, were all quite strong. We had very respectable durable goods figures and also and also ISM manufacturing numbers out of the United States in recent weeks as well. So by and large, the economic picture for the United States is looking fairly decent. We have four minutes left on, um, on the uh, on the clock as it were. Let's take a look at, um, let's have a quick discussion before the numbers come out about other um, other news, what's been going on very quickly in the financial markets. So the big news in the, in the past uh, in the past, uh, say, 12 or, or 15 hours, has, of course, been Theresa May turning around and getting a deal uh, with, with, with Brussels in, in, and the EU in relation to uh, the stage one, as, as, it's, as it's called, of the Brexit negotiations between, kind of broadly speaking, deciding a divorce bill from exiting the EU and also the Irish border situation uh, has also been, has also seemed to actually have come to some sort of agreement which allows which allows the United Kingdom government to actually kind of progress on to the next stage of the negotiations, which of course is it's a trade stage, and that of course is going to be that is going to be really one to watch because the UK government uh, is very keen on getting a free trade agreement with the EU once it leaves the EU. So that's been the, the big news. What we saw was um, there were reports last the reports late last yesterday evening late last night that. The EU was uh, that the uh, a, 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 a deal was going to be on the cards by this morning, and lo and behold, it was. So we did see a push higher in the pound last night, but it would appear that the, the pound has actually decided to give up some of those gains, particularly against the US dollar. It, 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 the pound was in was in fairly decent stead this morning before the figures actually came out. Sorry, about 7 a.m. before the um, just after the um, announcement was released. But as we can see here, looking at a daily chart, we can see how much, how much this is. This is the move here at the very early hours of the Friday morning. But the pound has been sliding ever since then. Also, bearing in mind, we have had a fairly strong U.S. dollar in the in the recent couple of weeks. This here is the dollar index. I'll look at it now on a uh, on a smaller chart. This is the four-hour chart I'm looking at, and as you can see, the broad thrust of the kind of the dollar index has been to the ups has been to the upside. And especially from late November onwards, uh, for the last week or 10 days, we've seen a fairly clear and concise push higher in the US dollar. As I mentioned, we've got non-farm payroll. Obviously, we have the, the Fed figures. Non-farm payrolls are out in two minutes, by the way. But, but seeing as economic indicators, as the US have, have been pushed, have been moving in the right direction, it's looking likely that the Fed, that the United States government is going to introduce the tax reforms, um, which would be which would be very much more pro-business and have been tipped to help the US dollar. And on top of that, we do have a Fed meeting next week. So this broad kind of push higher in the greenback over the last few few trading sessions has, of course, uh, dented the British pound. And as you can see here, if looking at an hourly chart, we can see exactly what's done over the past 24 hours. And it's been very clear uh, to the upside in terms of the movement of the US dollar. It's less than one minute now to the, to the jobless claims figures. I'll just open up the economic calendar. And we'll see what the numbers are going to come in as. I suspect we're going to get something in around the region of around 2.20 um, is uh, where I would potentially going to see the reports coming in. If you have any kind of uh, comments or any kind of estimates you want to uh, type in the box yourself, feel free to do so. Just kind of counting down. Also, in other political news, uh, Martin Schulz, the head of the STP, the Social Democrat Party in Germany, uh, su suggested he's open to co potential coalition talks with uh, Angela Merkel. And on the back of that, we're just getting some figures in now. 228 was the non-farm payroll figure. 
and also it is worth pointing out the figure came in at 228,000 ahead of the estimate which was 200,000 bearing in mind it was revised the previous month's number which was 261,000 was revised lower to 244,000 so the positive headline we have had a revision lower to the previous month's number so in a way it sort of cancels each other out but I would say overall it's net positive Unemployment rate remained at 4.1%, bang in line with market expectations. Let's have a quick look through at the other details here as well. Um, looking now at the average earnings. Has it it's failed to populate so far? Just bear with me one second. My Rolling Tremor is on a, on a different screen. I'll just have a quick look and read out the figures from there. Just bear with me one second. So average earnings managed to come on a on a year-on-year -year basis ticked higher to 2.5 percent uh, in line with the expectations that I've seen on a different economic calendar. On a month-on-month -month basis, they grew by 0.2 percent, but bear in mind they were expected to increase by 0.3 percent. We've also seen actually some revisions to the average earnings figure. Uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, average earnings, the previous report was 2.4 percent. Today's report came out 2.5%, uh, but, but the previous report was revised down to 2.3%. Adding to that, uh, the previous month-by-month -month figure for average earnings was 0.0%. It's now been revised lower to negative 0.1%. And on top of that, uh, today's month-by-month -month figure came in at 0.2%, lower than the expected 0.3%. So it's a very kind of mixed signals there on the average earnings figures. Uh, we've had a rev revision, we have had a, a tick up. On the, on the month, but also a revision to the other month's number. So sort of a mixed bag on that front, but overall it, seemed, it seems to have been a middle of the road, a fairly decent, nothing, out, nothing outstanding in terms of the actual economic indicator, in terms of the actual performance itself. I'll have a quick look now at the US dollar index. Yeah, I'll have a quick, I'll have a quick look now at the dollar index, uh, and then, then I'm moving on to a couple of currency pairs. All right, what we can see here is the first reaction was negative uh, on, on looking at the dollar index alone. Moved to, sharp move to the downside on the dollar index. As you can see here, some of the, say, the, the so far the, we haven't, uh, hasn't been, the numbers have not gone down well. I'll have a quick look now at what's going on in the euro dollar. Change it up now. Look at a five minute chart. So the euro has made a fairly decent move to the upside on the back of that. Bearing in mind we were just looking at the dollar index and the dollar and the euro is a quite a substantial weighting within the dollar index. So keep in mind uh, that, that the two are, are, are fairly correlated as there is a lot of, kind of cross cross constituencies in both. That is, a, that is a fairly decisive move to the upside in the US dollar versus the, the euro versus the US dollar. As you can see here, I'll take a look now at the big picture chart. We have seen a fair bit of kind of range bound trading and sort of uncertainty in the euro versus the US dollar uh, and over the last few weeks. Uh, it managed, after having a fairly decent sell off from September down to November, we pushed higher here, took out the October highs, the November high, took out the October highs. We have been sliding back now, and we're in around the 50-day moving average, which comes to play in around 117.55. Uh, so we're in around that level at the time being. If you can manage to hang, hold the ball, the 50-day moving average, that could put us instead back to potentially retest the November high of 119.61. And as I mentioned already, taking a look at, the, at even smaller data, lower data chart, did you consider a move to the upside initially on the euro? versus the US dollar. I'll have a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. I've got a, a smaller, a much tighter time frame. It's a very similar situation. We saw a lot of, lot of selling pressure um, this morning on, on, on well, the gains that were made on the back of the political announcement only lasted a few hours. Those gains managed to reverse themselves. 
traders in, in high anticipation of a strong number of a strong jobs report had a, had, had a um, surge of really buy the dollar on the run up to this number and we're now seeing a, a reversal of, of the actual, actual position. Taking a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. It's even though we have seen a uh, we have, have seen a push higher in the last few minutes, the big picture for the last number of months for the British pound versus the US dollar has been very much to the upside. It's this trend line here from the lows of lows of March connecting the lows of April. We saw a few dips below it here in November, but we're very much well off and well above the the, um, the trend line support here. While we remain north of this trend line support, and also looking at metrics in around, the, like for example, the 50-day moving average in around the kind of 132.50 region, I, I suspect the outlook for the pound is going to remain positive against the U.S. dollar. This jobs report, in my opinion, is sort of a kind of a, a B, a kind of a, a B minus or so. Or, um, it's a very kind of average, you know, average report. The headline figure was good; it topped expectations. But we had a previous revision downward to, 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 to the October report. All employment came in at 4.1%, so no we're going to great surprise there. And we had some mixed numbers on the average earnings. Um, and if anything, it's off, in a weird way, it's often more important to give credence to the to the revision because the revision, revisions can often be the final say rather than just the headline figure. Because even though we did see a, a decent, we did see a respectable year-on-year -year growth figure for average earnings, the previous month's number was revised lower. I'll have a look now and see um, and see how the how the US futures. Uh, and I should have a look now to see how gold is reacting to that because gold has obviously has tends to have an inverse relationship between the price of uh, of gold and also the, the US dollar. So what we saw here is gold obviously a lot of volatility uh, when the numbers were released, but as you can see here, this is this could be what I was just talking about. How everyone. Was looking at the headline number, everyone was focusing on 200,000. Market came in at 228,000. We saw a move to so initially kind of a large kind of spike to the upside and then down again on gold. So there may have been a suspicion, there may have been a kind of a, a skewing of the numbers that seeing the 200, 280,000, 228,000 jobs being added may have sent gold initially lower. And then the market actually digested and then realizes that hold on this is actually not as strong as a jobs report as the actual headline figures would let on. So we are seeing a lot of consolidation and a lot of, kind of uncertainty uh, when it comes to gold on the back of those figures, that report. So we're now trading a bit lower because it's kind of it's kind of sunk in that the the headline figure was better than expected, but at the same time. Um, we did see some, some mixed numbers and mixed data coming out in terms of average earnings. So in my view, we could see, um, dare I say, a, a quite an uninteresting afternoon trading because it's sort of, there's something in, in this report for everyone. It isn't in a particularly clear direction whether it's an overly good report and we're, and things, things are adding to the hawkish sentiment in the United States or it isn't a particularly damp, a, 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 a weak report that would suggest there's, uh, there's problems in the U.S. economy. It's somewhere in between. I take a look now. Uh, I see how the U.S. index futures are uh, are reacting to the numbers. I look at a very on one minute chart here just to have a see here. So that, so it was very clear and, and obvious. Uh, the numbers came out here at, the, at this time frame. As you can see, the overall kind of trend has been to the upside and the Dow Jones. It, it would appear that, uh, that, the, that the, the Dow futures are clearly happy with this, uh, with, this, uh, with, with this report. Even though, in my opinion, it's a fairly decent report. Nothing to, to get overly excited about. Uh, there were some good numbers in there. There were some, so there were some disappointing revisions. But what we can see, the initial reaction is positive. And if you take a look, and how the Dow has actually performed over, uh, on a wider basis, it's been very much to the upside. Uh, we can see here, this is on a, a four hourly chart, it's been very much a classic example of higher highs and higher lows. It is a textbook example of an upward trend, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low. The, market, the Dow Jones has been, has been in a stellar performance in the last number of, uh, the last number of months. It would appear that we're, that, that the um, the chart is giving no indications that, that this that this uh, market rally is, is, is coming to an end so far. So if we do happen to see any pullbacks 
in the Dow Jones. We could see uh, some new from fresh buyers enter the fold, seeing as buying on the dip has been a popular strategy for the last number of months. So if we do see any moves lower in the Dow, we could be looking heading back down towards yesterday's low in around the just north of 24,000 region. But overall, I would say it's a fairly respectable report. Um, and if we do kind of, if we do push higher, the first big devil to watch out for would be the, the recent record high of just north of 24,500. I'll have a look now at the S&P. Um, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'd imagine it's going to be a fairly similar move on the S&P 500. I look at a one minute chart to get the reaction. Oh, apologies. That was the Dow Jones again. Very similar looking chart. The market was was, was, pus, was pushing higher into it, and uh, certainly a post trading in a few minutes, uh, eleven minutes of trading after the numbers have been released, the uh, it has gone on to session highs. So things are obviously looking quite positive on the, uh, the market. Has liked so far has liked the uh, the, the S and P five hundred has liked the, uh, the jobs report from the United States. Uh, very similar to the to the Dow Jones, that it's been a clear and concise upward trend. Buying on the dips has been the kind of popular strategy over the last number of months when it comes to the um, when it comes to the S and P 500. So if we do happen to see any kind of pullbacks, we may find some support in around the lows of yesterday, in around the 2,626 level, or maybe even down as, as low as Wednesday's low as 2,620. But as I mentioned, even if we did see pullbacks, we could see fresh buyers step in, seeing as the kind of popular strategy for the last number of weeks and months has been buying on the dip. So if we do move to the upside, we are looking to kind of target the, the recent record high of 2,665. And then beyond that, traders will be looking towards the big numbers like 2,670, 80, 90, and then 2,700 itself. I'll have a quick look now at the NASDAQ 100 before we wrap things up. Towards the end of, uh, in the last, in early December, we did see a bit of a sell-off in U.S. tech stocks. It was almost like the, the tech stocks, uh, it's almost like the tech stocks were lagging behind the more traditional industrial stocks, but we have seen the, the, the gap now between the tech 100 and the NASDAQ 100 and the, and the Dow Jones and the S&P. Very similar situation here. The market was a bit un uncertain on the, on the run-up show, but, but since the numbers have come out, we have actually had a decent jump higher on the NASDAQ 100. We are looking at session highs for today in terms of the, uh, the move that we're seeing. And it is a, once again, like, like the other major US industries, a classic example of the markets, of the markets um, trading higher highs and higher lows. So as we can see here, we could be looking at, at, at heading back north of 6,400 for the NASDAQ 100. And then be, should we take out that level, the next big psychological number to, to look for beyond that will be 6,500, 600, and so on and so forth. I'll just do a fun, quick look now and see how the, uh, the FTSE 100 has reacted to, to the US numbers. Given that we have seen some weakness in the British pound, that has assisted um, the weakness in British British pound versus the U US dollar and the, and the gains at the pound made against the euro this morning have been uh, have been eroding. So take a look now and see how the, how the US how the FTSE 100 reacted. Not too dissimilar to other markets, R rallied rallied uh, into the number. Bit of a sell off just ahead of the number itself. Bit of profit taking. Traders squaring up their position before the number comes out. And lo and behold, the, the move post the numbers are broadly in line with what we've seen on the Wall Street, on the, on the, on the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and of course the Nasdaq 100. So it does appear that the FTSE 100 has, uh, has also welcomed the numbers we've seen from the United States. Dollar card, yeah, sure, I'll do the dollar card now in a second. And then after that, we look to wrap it up because then it's now coming to quarter to the hour. Looking at, at the... Uh, Looking at the, the the chart for the FTSE 100, this is the highest level. Uh, we're currently trading at, at the highest level in December, even though the, the week, the month is only eight days old. It is worth noting that we are pushing higher on the FTSE 100. Uh, I'll take a look now at the daily chart. 
So the FTSE 100 had a fairly, was in a fairly decent, pretty obvious downtrend from late, from, from early November. The November high failed to take out the take out the all time high, and then ever since then, put a, a, a lower low here, lower high, lower low, it's pushing higher here. Now, like I said, we're not we're not currently trading at the, the high of the month. December's only eight days old, but we're still trading at the high of the month. We're approaching up, approaching towards the 200 moving average, and the 200 moving average comes into play at six thousand, sorry, seven thousand four hundred. And if you do take out 7,400 and have a decisive move north of that, we could be looking back towards the late November highs of 7,472. But if we do continue in the downward trend that has been in for the last number of weeks since early November, we could be heading, heading back down towards the December low of 7,278. I'll quickly do dollar CAD and dollar yen. And... Uh, Given that we're running out of time, that unfortunately will have to be the last few currency pairs you look at. Also, in the in the excitement and hysteria of the non-farm payrolls, we also had some numbers that came out from Canada in, that, in, the, in the time period. I believe there were housing data. So we, we Canadian housing starts, which came out at half, uh, sorry, at one fifteen just beforehand, and Canadian housing starts by the by the looks of it came in better than expected. It was an it was higher than the forecast, and on top of that, it was a nice increase on the previous month. And also at, at the uh, at, half, at half past the hour, we had the uh, utility capacity utilization rate, which remained fine in line with market expectations and unchanged on the quarter. Dollar CAD, dollar CAD. I'll have a look now. I'll have a quick look at the one minute chart to kind of get the initial reaction. As you can see here. Uh, as you can see here, the market sold off quite heavily, bounced back more than clear as losses, and now is sort of broadly lower uh, before before the numbers actually came out itself. Bearing in mind, we did have some numbers out of Canada which came down expected not too long before the, the jobless claims figures came out of the United States. And then, of course, adding to that, we then had a mixed report, broadly good, but mixed report, nothing, nothing to really write home about. So, so the, 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 the the movement we've seen on the dollar CAD in the last few weeks has been fairly, it's been fairly range bound. It's, it's found it very difficult to get north of the 120, 129 region, and at the same time, it's usually found support in around this area here. I know it broke through at, at, at 126.66. I know it obviously appears to that level here, but it didn't go far too far below it. So it appeared to be range bound for the time being. And we're near the upper end of the range, but as you can see, that we're slightly lower since the non farm payrolls come out. So if you're a trader who's interested in a range-bound trading strategies, we could be looking at a scenario whereby the market, if it fails to get north of 129, we could be heading back down towards the lower end of the range in around the kind of 126.66, or indeed maybe perhaps even down as low as um, as the as Tuesday's low, which comes into play in at 126.37. So we, there are the kind of areas we could be looking at. Obviously, if you break north of the of 129, the Tuesday moving average at 120 at 129.55. You, you got to keep an eye on. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking to the June low of 131.64. Moves to the downside, may find support in around the lows, the mid the lows of mid of mid October, in around the 124.50 region. Let's take a look at the dollar yen now before we wrap this up. So the dollar yen has. Uh, take a look now at the minute by minute chart. So the initial reaction was, was to the downside, and then we saw the we saw the, we saw the market bounce back, and then of course move lower again. So this is the kind of classic uh, non-farm payroll kind of market moves one direction, the numbers digest, and uh, and and then eventually we kind of look to actually get a proper direction out of it. So taking a look now at the daily chart, we can see here that. After the after the after the highs of November, we did see a decent sell-off, traded below the 200-day moving average, and, and it's been pushing higher ever since. Notice how we had a decent sell-off here. There's a steady increase in negative momentum on the MACD histogram on the MACD indicator, and then of course that negative momentum declined, then it swung positive, confirming that they're going to push higher 
in the in the actual move of the underlying market the dollar versus the yen. So it would appear that the the, that the momentum is with the buyers. The price is pushing higher. Um, uh, that has been the trend for the last week or so. If you do manage to take out the 113.57 region, uh, the next price beyond that, keep an eye out for, is the 114. And a move north of 114 uh, will then put will then bring it to site the November high of 114.73. The move to the downside may encounter support in around the 50-day moving average. We see some call it consolidation in around there. That comes into play at 112.85. And then south of that, heading back down potentially towards the 112 region. Uh, that's all it from our, from our webinar this week. Thank you for tuning in. Please bear in mind on, on, on the Monday coming up, um, which is Monday the 11th of yes Monday the 11th of December, I'll be hosting our weekly Monday webinar at 12:15. So please feel free to sign in and uh, listen to that. Also, there will be a recording of this webinar on, on the Market Insight section of our platform. That can be found under Market Pulse, second option down, Market Insights, and I'll also tweet it out myself. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you for your kind messages. Uh, that's all for me this week. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week, and good luck.